Solo edition office hours tonight on a Tuesday, March 4th, uh, 5.44 p.m. I'm going solo tonight because it takes time to um, to set up a hangout or have uh, people from my team to schedule all that. And I'm, in the meantime, I want to make an effort to answer questions from my members uh, that are piling up on my desk. So it's important for me to address them in a timely manner. So it's going. To, I'm going solo tonight. Um, anyway, you know, the other thing I'm doing is I realize how loud I am and my mom does this thing. <laughs> so when she got her first cell phone, she used to yell into it thinking that, uh, because it's a device it you know, she needs to project her voice for it to come out loud, you know, clear on the other end. And she's not aware that of the technology we have. And I always laugh at that and we used to make fun of her but but i actually do the same thing so when i'm on the computer making videos i'm leaning in and yelling into my mic because i think uh for some reason that it's not going to come out clear so i'm learning to trust technology and just speak as if you were two feet in front of me okay first quote well, actually before we get to the first question i want to say um a lot of my, uh, a lot of the themes that I pull, a lot of the dialogue that I create is from, you know, real clients, real sessions. And the value in that is there's truth uh, in, in, in whatever topic or whatever angle, whatever that story uh, is. And, and because there's truth, I think what happens is when I create dialogue about it, many people usually can relate to that theme, even though we all have different stories. And, and you know, we, we're all wired differently, we have different situations. Um, it's a good way to just throw a big net out there and, and try to help people. So I was doing a session today, um, clients, uh, chaotic past, uh, lots of um, abuse, lots of sexual abuse, struggling with addiction. And we were talking about something interesting, the idea of respecting your body. And I started thinking about that. What, what, um, what, what does that mean to you to respect your body? I know that, first let's talk about respect. Okay, so, you know, trust is built and respect is earned. So if, if, uh, if your body was a separate person, okay, and you have to earn respect because you have been disrespecting your body, and under that umbrella we have, you know, uh, disrespecting your body would be treating it like a trash can. It would be, uh, you know, Obviously, drugs, uh, McDonald's, um, using it as a, as an object, um, you know, uh, letting other people take advantage of your body, right? That kind of stuff. Uh, whatever it means to you to abuse, uh, to to disrespect your body. So, if you were to then tell yourself, "I want to respect my body," um, you would have to earn that respect. So, what would it look like? to earn respect of, of, of instead of a person, of your body? What would that look like to you? What would that look like in thoughts? What would that look like in behavior? And uh, how would you go about doing that? And then here's the other thing. By respecting your body, how would that change ripple in your life, in relationships, in uh, self-esteem, in the, the, the way you carry yourself, all that stuff. So I think um, I think it's an important question to ask yourself: Is are you respecting your body? If not, how am I going to earn respect? How am I going to earn my body's respect? Okay. First question, and uh, this is a a question I was not going to answer or spend time with. Then I decided to to answer it. Um, it says, if you were therapeutic in any nature, you would not capital N O T charge. Five dollars, you are BS, <laughs> just an asshole looking for money. Through ads and pop-ups, you can make an income if, in fact, that was your goal. People like you suck and are, are, are scum. Uh, have a good life feeding on others, as you clearly do. Shame on you. Uh, been in therapy the right way almost two years. You are pathetic. So, of course, uh, there's a part of me that wants to say... 
fuck you. <laughs> and uh, um, obviously your therapy is not working. Um, that's childish and immature. So what I tell a lot of people to do is to first look inward. And I, I definitely want to practice what I preach. And so I thought about this question. And I thought if there's just truth to this, you know. And here's the thing. Um, when I started this, it, it was the intent was never to make money. Okay, it was always to uh, create a dialogue that could possibly help others. And then when I started this, I did a lot of things for free for a long time. And I was doing uh, emailing people, uh, constantly spending hours um, giving back. Uh, my sessions were fifty dollars, I think. I don't remember what they were. And then they they went they went up as as I had less and less time. Uh, but if you, and the other thing is this: if you can't afford uh, five dollars a month, which is uh, less than I think what a lot of people spend at Starbucks a day um, you're not I don't then it's like don't come I don't want you in my community I don't think you're gonna get anything out of it uh, one the first rule of anything therapeutic we learn in school is that there has to be some kind of exchange you know um, if there if therapists were free like let's say I don't know the government or your taxes paid for therapist it would be a completely different process i think people once they pay for something they invest more into it you know and that's how they get something back if things are free in this world um they're not people don't don't invest as much that being said my therapeutic community my membership is not therapy you know you know it's it's a it's a it's an access to community and content so anyway that's that uh what else i what else was i gonna say on this uh, I, I, I rarely get hate mail, so when I do, I actually would, would like to address it because I know there's probably other people that, that feel the same way. Okay, let's get to your questions. First question. A childhood buddy posted something that led me down this rabbit hole. What I've read this far, uh, I, I respect your thoughts. I'm just wondering if you think people are diagnosed with bipolar or schizophrenia that are actually just emotionally violated, broken, and not either of those illnesses. So this is a really good question. Um, still saying um way too much. It's so hard to break that pattern. So I think, in my opinion, based on uh, just working with various people, uh, ADD and bipolar are two of the most overdiagnosed conditions. And here's the thing: I hate labels because once. I, because I know the impact of them. So once you put a label on someone or a doctor tells you something, you start to believe it. And, it, and it's like, it may not even be true, but it becomes a condition because of your thought process, what you believe, and the label that you put on yourself. Uh, it's like if you believe you're sick or if you believe you can't do something, that's going to turn into reality, you know? So, uh, that being said, I, I think that it's, it's, it's there are legitimate cases and you... You have to um, get second opinions. You have to uh, see what is true and what is not. I, I wouldn't, because someone has letters after their name, uh, like myself, just take it like it's it's you know it's 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 the word of of God. I would I would investigate it and and, and challenge those things. Um, and then if you get a lot of people saying the same thing that are that are professional that are that can uh, diagnose whether you're bipolar or or if you're dealing with um, schizophrenia, whatever it is, then then you you know then you figure out what solutions can work for you. So, are these actually emotionally violated, um, broken, and not either of those illnesses? It's hard to answer. It depends on the uh, the, the case. Uh, it depends on the person's story, and I would have to know a lot more uh, to give you my opinion. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I also don't like the word broken. I I, real, I hate when people say they're broken. Uh, if that's if that's your belief, then that's how you're going to live. Okay, next question. Uh, the woman I love doesn't love me anymore. I heard her through a written text to another that truly meant nothing to me. So it sounds like that uh, he got caught um, and... Uh, maybe I'm assuming he got caught texting someone else, another female. I want to build a life with this woman. I'm deeply in love with her. 
John, keep your voice down. Trust technology. I've been physically faithful, but the shit talking I did has put me in an effed up space. I'm off balance and did this thing to feel better about me as she pulled back from us, leaving me to question her feelings instead of seeing how much she loved me and that she was afraid. Angry. I just need to rebuild her trust in me. Us. She said we were starting over and it's only been a month, but she doesn't believe I love her like I say I do. I feel like a whiny little bee. The bee stands for bitch, I'm assuming. Seeking her love and, and affection. I want to earn her love, trust, and respect. I know it's going to take some time, but how can I show her there is no one else? By hurting her, I've hurt myself. Okay. I know she loves me. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Uh, sorry. I'm reading this again. Okay, here are my thoughts. So building trust takes time. Uh, it's not like, you know, I think a lot of people break trust and then apologize and think like, okay, we're all good. Why doesn't she go down on me like she used to? Uh, well, it's because trust is built and it takes time. And um, the way you build trust is always through action. It, it's because you can talk and you can say what you want. Um, it requires patience and it requires her you earning the trust or building it through action through behavior okay um and it's going to take time for her to heal uh, whatever you did the texting whatever uh to heal and then and then to decide to trust you again and invest in that and feel safe so you have to create a, a safe space and it has to be consistent for a period of time so we're talking about a month a month is not that long uh, i think you have the right mind the right mindset I would tell yourself, not her, tell yourself that you're going to do all you can do, um, that you are doing everything you're doing to build trust, and you can do as much of that in action, in behavior, um, and the rest is out of con your control, you know, uh, in including the time it takes for her to trust you again, trust you again completely. So, so know that, know that, okay, um, I've made a mistake, or I've effed up. Um, and I, I want to regain this person's trust, and the, this is how I'm going to do it every day, uh, through behavior, through how I treat this person, through creating that safe space, and that's all you can do. The rest, you can't, you can't, you can't force someone to trust you. You can't uh, say, okay, and then you know, in in two months, the trust will be back and everything is good. You 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 have no, idea. you can't. And it's also it's not fair for you to put a, uh, a timeline on when she will trust you again or if she will so let it go man you know what you made a mistake you're human for uh, uh, if your intent is to be with this person and, and and you love her then learn from that mistake and and build that trust again uh, in behavior okay next question uh, my question for you is how to approach the subject of mental illness when dating, how soon is too soon to say, hey, I have a history of, here we go again, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever, and uh, how or should I broach the subject of a new partner engaging with a counselor therapist to debrief if they need to? Is it too much to ask that someone engage with their therapist? Is it unrealistic to have that as a non-negotiable, particularly if I am proactive with my own health uh, well-being okay so obviously not on a first date but i don't really know if you have to announce it you know i don't i don't think you know what's interesting about this question is when when he or she says um oh how should i broach the subject of a new partner engaging with a counselor or therapist to brief if they need to that's not up to you you know and to uh, obviously, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about with labels. And I don't know if this person is 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 clinically bipolar or struggling with schizophrenia or whatever or not. But do you see how labels affect people just by the way that she asked me this question? She obviously has labeled herself this and now feels insecure about it. And when she's she or he is dating someone... She's all, he or she's all, they're all fired up about, okay, so how am I, what are they going to think? How do I approach it? How do I, I ask them to see a therapist because of my condition? 
uh, you don't need to announce it. You know what? It's your stuff. And uh, cross that bridge when you get there. Uh, he or she will be aware of the way you think and your behavior. And it may be a problem or it may not. You know, maybe you've just been with the wrong people that have not supported you uh, fully. So relax. Take Peel the labels off. Deal with your uh, conditions if they're legit in your own way. And if you, if you feel more comfortable telling them that you're struggling with things, that's fine. Uh, do it when you feel safe. Do it when you feel that, that uh, the person's not going to judge you. Next question. How do you differentiate between the kind of fear that you should listen to, the warning, the, the siren, or if it's one that's holding you back, the kind of fear that you should lean into? How do you know when your fears are the good kind? Uh, the ones that prevent us from doing something stupid and painful and the bad kind, which we should acknowledge and conquer. This relates, so this is a great question, by the way. This relates to my situation, my current situation of deciding whether to move out with a boyfriend or not, but would like to also know in general. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer this. You're welcome. Thank you for your five bucks. Sorry. Uh, okay, so I think that almost everything. Uh, that, I apologize. That's that was. I could blame it on this, but um, this is. Look where it's at. I've only I've only had a couple sips, so I can't really blame it on this. I think almost everything can be traced back to fear, and so how do you know if it's healthy or unhealthy fear? Um, one way is to track patterns. So if there is a certain fear, whether it's in relationships or, or in, 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 in CrossFit or in exercise or, or I mean fitness or in um, anything or in work, career, uh, if, if it's a pattern in your life and you're aware of that, if you can look back and you kind of, kind of see that there's a pattern going on here, that's one way to see if those fears are, are something that... Um, you should try to overcome. The other thing is that if those fears are a pattern, how does that manifest in your life? You know, is it uh, making you empowered or is it depowering you? Okay. Uh, anyway, so I could talk all about, all day about fear. So, the, but let's get to your question. Um, why are uh, you're wondering if you should move out with your boyfriend? Um, Here's a question for you. Why are you afraid to move out with your, your boyfriend? And I think the question you have to ask yourself is, is the relationship worth this next step, which is, which is a big deal, moving out with someone, you know? Um, what's the fear really about? A lot of times, and it's not gonna be logistics, it's not gonna be, uh, you know, he keeps his, he, he puts his, leaves his socks on the floor, I'm afraid that um, he's gonna smell funny when he comes home from, from working out, or. I think deeper, it's going to be a fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, fear of this not working out, um, fear that he may leave, fear that you may leave, all those things. So I would that's where I would explore, you know, and really think about your fears. And if you're not ready, then don't do it because um, moving in, like I said, moving in with someone is obviously a really big deal. Excuse me. That being said, if you, yes, I am reading because I'm, I took some notes. Um, if you trust this relationship and you feel that it's solid, then the, the, the fear is maybe something you have to push through for this relationship um, to move on to like the next level, you know what I'm saying? For this relationship to, to grow into something. So anyway, great questions, guys. And um, I are, I'm gonna do another one and knock out um, more questions. Uh, and uh, hopefully I will address all of them. That's it. Happy Tuesday. Be well.